Hey guys, Josh Fevlowitz here with Full Code. I'm going to be reviewing one of our recent cases, an influenza case. We're still in the height of flu season right now. This case is written by Krithi Bacha. So let's get started. This is your patient, a five-year-old girl who is presenting with four days of cough, fever, and low energy. Her parents have also noted that she appears to be short of breath. There have been sick contacts at her school. She's had some associated gastrointestinal symptoms, and they've been giving her Tylenol for fever. Here we go. So here's your patient. Remember that your attending is up in the corner to give you guidance and help if you get stuck on a case. Your patient is Shayla Moore. She's a five-year-old girl. She weighs 15 kilograms. Remember, that's going to be important in a pediatric patient, understanding their weight so you can dose things correctly. So she's presenting with cough and fever up to 103.7 over the past few days. She's been tired, sleepy, decreased appetite. She's had two episodes of diarrhea, but no vomiting. She's had some productive cough. She's been complaining of tummy ache and she's been exposed to other people that are sick at school. She is vaccinated and except she has not received a flu vaccine for this season. Um, parents are concerned that she is lethargic, has low energy, and that she seems short of breath. So no relevant past medical history, no regular medications except for over-the-counter, no drug allergies, no family history, no relevant social history. So in this type of patient, what do we want to know about? So certainly in the setting of fever, constitutional symptoms. Viral illnesses can often have congestion, cough, or sore throat associated. So we're going to ask about ENT. We're going to ask about the shortness of breath, get more detail on the respiratory symptoms. We're going to ask maybe about associated cardiovascular symptoms that would suggest a more complex diagnosis. She's had some associated GI symptoms, so reasonable to ask about that. And in a young female patient, definitely reasonable to ask about genital urinary symptoms as a UTI could be a cause of fever. Reasonable as well to ask about rash as many illnesses have a characteristic rash, which is not present here. So you attach your patient to the monitor now. She has a fever, 38. She has a low O2 sat, 93% approximately on room air, and moderately tachycardic in the 120s. Now remember, at this age, a normal heart rate could be above 100, but still this is even elevated beyond that. So in terms of her examination, she's awake and alert and interacting. We want to know about her breathing, certainly, any respiratory distress, one about her overall circulatory status. Again, with the setting of ENT symptoms or pharyngitis that could play a role in this, we want to do an ENT exam, look in the ears, look in the throat. In a child with fever, reasonable to assess the neck if there's concern for meningitis. Want to understand her perfusion status, cardiovascular exam, She's tachycardic as noted on the monitor. Respiratory standpoint is definitely important based on what people, what her parents are reporting, and she has specific focal lung sounds on the left base here. Also, an abdominal exam is relevant, which here is benign. Arguably, a skin exam would be reasonable too. So let's move on to stabilization. What are we going to do for this patient? We certainly need IV access, given that she is systemically ill. We may need blood. We may need to do other interventions. And she's hypoxic as well. So 91%, 92%. Let's put her on some supplemental oxygen. Now she's a little bit tachycardic, but that some of that may be from the setting of fever. In a pediatric patient, you want to think about IV fluids as a weight-based dosage. So a 20 cc per kilo would be a reasonable dose. For her, that's 15 kilogram patient, that's gonna be 300. So if you look here at your choices for the typical stabilization, this is more than she should receive. So you can go over here to your IV fluids and select a more weight-based dose and give that to her. 
So now differential in this case, we're, you know, we're concerned she's hypoxic, she has focal lung sounds and shortness of breath. So certainly could be pulmonary in nature, ARDS, pneumonia, bronchitis is reasonable as well. Asthma exacerbation is on your initial list, but seems less likely in the setting of fever. And then we also want to think about infectious causes, certainly. So a simple viral syndrome could do it, viral URI. Again, we're not seeing signs of pharyngitis, but that's a common possibility in children. Influenza definitely on our list. It's the right season, fever, cough, systemic symptoms. All right, so that's your initial differential. Let's move on. What are we going to do to investigate this? So she's systemically ill. She's hypoxic. I want a CBC to assess for leukocytosis, which is present. I want chemistries to give some other markers of hydration status. Now, this is 1.2 creatinine. That's abnormal in a child. Suggests some hypovolemia or dehydration. What else do we want to know? Well, certainly. We're suspicious for flu, we want to test for the flu. And that test comes back positive. Now the rapid flu is pretty good, but not great. It may miss some cases. The flu PCR is much more accurate, but takes longer to get back. And what else? So we're already concerned about the patient's perfusion a little bit. The creatinine is up a little bit. She's tachycardic, so reasonable to get a lactate in this setting and also reasonable to obtain blood cultures as well, just in case there's sepsis or systemic illness going on in addition to this. So her lactate's a little bit elevated. We've sent off our blood cultures. For imaging with those focal lung findings, I want a chest x-ray. Let's take a look at that. We'll pull that up here. Remember that your interpretations will be available on the easier settings but not on the advanced setting. So here you can see there's a opacity focally on the left lung that is obscuring that heart border right here. So that's concerning for additional pneumonia as well. So what are we gonna now do about this? We've given the patient a fluid bolus. It's also reasonable to address the fever with Tylenol or ibuprofen. So let's give her that. And then we wanna also specifically address the illness that is present. So Tamiflu, also Tamivir, is a medication that's available to treat the flu. It's very commonly prescribed during flu season. The medication is not without controversy. It has relatively limited effect and it does have some side effects associated with it, but in the circumstance where you have complicated flu or someone with significant comorbidities or someone who is severely ill, it is recommended to give it according to CDC guidelines. So this patient has a concurrent pneumonia, has hypoxia, is somewhat systemically ill. Tamiflu, also Tamivir, is recommended as use as an antiviral to help in this situation. And then additionally, we have this focal finding on chest x-ray, remember, this finding of an opacity that is concerning for a concurrent pneumonia. And specifically in flu, you're concerned about a MRSA pneumonia or a Staph aureus pneumonia, which in children can be potentially life-threatening. So what are we going to do to treat that? We want some degree of antibiotic coverage to help address that concurrent pneumonia. Now. What you actually give in this circumstance can get a little bit complicated depending on your interpretation. But I'm gonna argue that this patient is systemically ill, they're young, they don't have significant comorbidities, but they do have hypoxia, tachycardia, fever, they have a focal infiltrate, but they are not unstable and they're not acutely ill. So it's certainly reasonable to cover for Staph aureus and specifically to cover for MRSA in the setting of a post-influenza pneumonia. The exact coverage that you use might become broader if you're arguing this patient is very ill 
or has a life-threatening presentation, you may need additional coverage beyond that. Um, but for our purposes here, this is a post-influenza pneumonia in a patient with systemic illness, but not life-threatening illness. So MRSA coverage is reasonable, and we've selected vancomycin for that. Now, communications, is there any help that you need from your specialist in this circumstance? Sure, it's reasonable to involve infectious disease, but not mandatory. Um, this is something that's in your wheelhouse. All right, so now we've come to the end. What are we gonna do with this patient? What's your diagnosis and what's your disposition? So this patient we've confirmed has influenza. This patient additionally has a influenza associated pneumonia, community acquired. Those are your two diagnoses. And then what are we gonna do with this patient in terms of disposition? This patient do you admit to the floor or do you admit to the PICU, the pediatric ICU? And I'm going to argue that this patient warrants admission because of her systemic illness, because of her hypoxia or oxygen requirement, but she's improved with the interventions that you've done and she's stable to be on a monitored floor bed. So we're going to send her to the floor. All right, so let's hand off. We're ready to go. We're finishing up. And then again, this will break down, this screen will break down the actions that you've done throughout the case. And you can read not only the specific explanations for each action and why it's scored that way, you can also go into a more detailed discussion that covers the topic of influenza and all the information that we've covered in this case. So there you go. Thanks so much for playing. Have a great day. Keep enjoying full code.